Yes, come all the way from Perth and they give me the death shift. I mean, three weeks. Um, just that little bit of that, the history side of things is, um, you know, it's, it's one of the things with being a waste educator is, is it's not so much of, of, in many cases, what your training is and, and whatnot. It's, it's what all your life experiences. And every single one of us, you know, are, are connected to waste in some sort of way. And it's just really strange that I've just had all of these funny waste kind of things through all my life but it was only sort of really the last 10 years I've actually sort of arrived in the, in the waste industry. But when you're on reflection, you know, been there forever, you know. So, and all of you people, I'm sure, is the same. You know, you think, think back of what you've done in your childhood and everything else, you know, you're dealing with waste all the, all the time. So I wanted to actually talk to you a little bit about a, a campaign that we, we've got sort of running over there in the West. And uh, it's, it's only been going for a year, but it's been about five years in the making. So there's been a lot of sort of history and hard work behind it in order to try and sort of get it, get it up. Um, but, you know, one of the great things about waste is that we're all involved in it, every single person. You know, we're all actually, you know, producing waste in some sort of way. You know, we're contributing to the, to the waste industry. And it's really easy to actually engage people in waste, you know, but... But, but, okay, but there is that, it's very easy not to care about waste. I mean, yes, we're all very caring about, you know, the plastics in the, in the, the ocean and the, and the fish and the turtles and all those sorts of things and how they're all being harmed, but a lot of that is an arm's length away, that basically, you know, it's got nothing to do with me. That's someone else's problem. You know, I'm concerned and we need to do something about it, but it's not concerned with me. So one of the things that we, we, we did is we actually got a big pile of, of, of rubbish. We got a, a, a typical family's waste for a year, piled it up, took a, took a photo of it and actually got it printed up life size and had it distributed around the place so people could actually stand right next to their rubbish and have a look at it. We also produced some, some clear bins with the aim of actually distributing these bins to people and they could actually see those bins and see what their waste actually looks like. And then we also produced a number of, uh, of uh, other promotional sort of items that we distributed around the, the neighbourhood so that again, people showing people the, the, the waste. And what we did is we asked everyone to face their waste. It was a call to action. But just a little bit of a background and the interesting thing is again, you know, this is, as I said, this has been a number of years in the, in the process and it's quite funny that as I've been sitting here for the last two days listening to all the different speakers, that so much of what, what we, were, we were developing in this particular uh, um, campaign, you know, is stuff that people are sort of talking about and it's, it's sort of happening. Some of the things you'll, you'll also see is a little bit probably dated. But one of the things that, that we, we found when we first started this is that when you actually engage with people and talk to people, you, you, we were talking about a waste problem and they'd look at you blankly, like, what's the problem? There, you know, there was no problem. They saw, they saw waste as being very well managed by the councils. You know, they just put the bin out and it disappeared regularly. There wasn't a problem with it. I mean, it was very convenient, although their big problem was generally they would like a larger recycling bin was the major problem that people had with their waste problems. Over in the West, we love bulk verge collections. You know, once a year we could actually take our whole house, chuck it out on the verge and buy a whole new lot of stuff and fill up the house and the council just took it away for free. Fantastic. We loved it. And then we had all our councils. They all wanted to change this system and everyone was going, why? You know, because to the public it was working really well. They didn't see there being a problem. But we all know what the problem was. You know, we've got this world of convenience it's full of disposable items. You know, we're geared up to produce waste, that the, the waste is made up of multiple materials all joined together which makes it very difficult to separate. And of course there's this whole idea of waste economics. You know, it's all about tonnes. You know, in landfills, you know, to make a really good profitable landfill you want lots of tonnes. You know, waste to energy plants, they want lots of tonnes. You've got recyclers, they want lots of tonnes. Skip bin operators want lots of tonnes. It's tonnes, tonnes, tonnes. We want lots of stuff. The more waste we've got, the better it is for the waste industry. It makes it very profitable. So there's this whole idea, you know, we talk about reduce, reuse and recycle. You know, that's the big one. You know, we placed an awful lot of um, faith in that recycling because that's the answer. And the thing is, when you think about it, in the, the waste hierarchy, 
recycling is the top of the waste hierarchy when it comes to waste, because everything above recycling, the old reduce and reuse, that's not waste, because it's not waste yet, it's still being used. It's only waste once people start to want to get rid of it, when it starts moving into the bins. And that's and the first bit on the waste hierarchy is, is, is the recycle. So that's why we, I think we've really sort of concentrated in there as a waste industry because that's where we are. I mean, I don't know of any reduce industry or re reuse industry. It doesn't exist at the moment. That's what they call the circular economy. We haven't sort of got up there yet. There's no one organising that. It's not really the waste industry's problem. In West Australia too, we have this Better Bins program. You know, three bins. Everyone else is rolling out three bins all around Australia too. It's terrific. We're giving everyone more bin space. It's more waste. It's terrific. And what's more, you know, three bins, it's better sorted. So it's more resource, you know, so great. We all get more tonnes for all these different types that we can do something with. It's terrific. So it's more, more, more. And that's the, that's been, that's the mantra of, of the waste industry. It's it, in full stop, you know, right across the board. And an old wastey once said to us that, you know, an empty bin is a good bin. You know, and there is actually a certain amount of truth in that. So that's sort of where we sort of started coming, needing this little bit of a rethink. You know, we needed to start focusing on the top of the waste hierarchy. You know, the, 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 the whole idea about stopping waste, minimising waste before it's actually produced. But there is that particular problem, is that how do you measure that top part of the waste hierarchy? So it's a lot easier to operate in that, those lower levels because we can measure all of those. We can measure how much tonnes goes to landfill, how much we're recovering, how much we're recycling. Oh, how do we measure how much we reduce? How much do we measure how we've avoided? We, those sort of numbers, we don't really, really kind of know. So, you know, we sort of fall back down to that, that bottom level again. But still, you know, rethinking it, less waste. You know, less disposal costs, less processing, you know, it's less resource use, less energy use, less environmental damage. There's a lot of really good social, environmental and economic benefits in there. We just haven't worked out how to really tap into those just yet. And, you know, in fact, the money is actually doing the opposite to all of those sorts of things. And that's where we've again got to try and make that bit of a bit of a shift. But again, the important thing here is that you know, and it, some of the speakers have said it in other, other sessions, you know, it's, again, is to get the individuals to start thinking, you know, that this is what we need to do. And it's those individuals who will start creating that little bit of a change to occur. They'll start putting pressure on, and again, we've seen it with all these other things that have been going on around the place. People are actually starting to act. They're starting to say, yeah, we can actually, you know, start reducing things, you know, living with less plastics and whatnot. So we went to how do we do this? And again, the first thing is that we, we, we thought was, you know, you need to engage people. You've got to get them interested because if you don't get them interested, no one's listening. You know, like a lot of our councils, they put out lots of information to their residents, you know, but Again, they haven't captured, they give them a fridge magnet which just goes into the bin or something because they're not interested in it. You know, you've got lots of stuff on websites, no one looks at it because they're not interested. It's not till they get a bit of an interest for some reason do they then go searching for these things. So you've got to engage them and once you've engaged people, that's when you can actually educate them. You can give them the understanding, you can tell them the how and the why. And once they know that, that's when real behavioural change happens, when people sort of know you know, what they have to do. And there's a number of drivers, you know, they, they can be economic ones. So you can either do financial rewards or you can do financial fines. You know, both of those things can work. You've got your social drivers, you've got your economic, um, environmental ones. But they need to, again, appeal to the individual. You need positives and you need negatives. So, again, you need to have all sorts of different ones. So, in order to do that, we, we sort of set up a Hello. campaign. Waste is a big problem, and one that's only getting bigger. The trouble is, it's so easy for households to ignore their waste. We just put things in the bin, the council comes and takes it away. It's out of sight and out of mind. To change this, we launched an initiative called Face Your Waste. We took normal household bins and rebuilt them with transparent plastic. Then we rolled them out onto suburban streets. We also created billboards, ad shelves, and radio ads. What do you make a mess you face up to? So why do you face up to a household mess? 
and stop sending 20 million tons of waste to the landfill. To find out how, visit placeyourwaste.com. We drove people to our website where we gave them tools to reduce their rubbish. For the first time, people were forced to confront their waste. It's pretty disgusting, like, seeing what people are chucking out, and yeah, yeah, it's pretty gross. It definitely makes me think twice about what I throw away. And it wasn't just in local communities where our bins were being talked about. How would you feel if your neighbours could see what you threw in the bin? Well, by next week, these clear bins will replace green ones in a trial of homes across Perth. The trial has to make residents think twice about what they throw away, challenging them to face their waste. The campaign reached 2 million people in a state with a population of only 2.5 million. We got over 300,000 impressions on Facebook alone. Isn't it about time we all face our waste? So again, with that one there, those sort of figures and things, that was just after the first couple of weeks. The, the, the actual campaign just sort of just blew us away, just the, the, the amount of attention that it actually did, did get. But the whole thing was it's that out of sight, out of mind thing, you know, and that's what we needed to tap in. And the thing is, unless we can see it, we won't do anything about it. And the thing is, so we ask people to face their waste. And we know that it works because you look at the litter campaigns, you know, the Keep Australia Beautiful, Clean Up Australia, Plastic Free July, Container Deposit Schemes, all of those things are based around litter. People seeing their waste out there, not liking it, and being encouraged to actually do something about it. It's them facing their waste. The war on waste, same sort of thing. All of a sudden, people were being confronted by waste and waste issues. Suddenly, people got a little bit interested. So again, you know, people need to see their, their waste. But with the campaign that we were sort of running with the Face Your Waste is, again, all that's out there, it's someone else's. So it was actually to get people to go, it's my waste, I own the problem and what I could do. So we're getting people to actually look at their own waste. You know, it's not saying that someone else has done that out there, this is mine. And so we did, we just produced that, that whole idea of, of that, that clear bin, the set of clear bins, you know, and the big, big, um, the big pile of rubbish. And so we had lots of responses to the campaign a lot of it was negative initially because it was, you know, being accused of bin police, invasion of privacy, you know, yuck, we don't want to, you know, have people seeing my rubbish. Um, you know, one person sort of said that she was concerned that, that they'd see how much, much she drank, you know, and it was like, you know, well, you know, again, that's not really the problem, you know, maybe hide, hide the stuff until you don't have the clear bin, you know, it was a waste of money. There was safety concerns because all of a sudden people were going to want to climb into the bin. I don't know what made it any different from any others. You know, people could walk past and actually look at look inside your bin and see what you've actually got there. So there was security things, but then no one really minded when they, when we had our bulk verge kit collections for putting all their stuff out on the verge and everyone can see what new stuff people were getting. I think that was a bigger con concern. But then there was all the positives. You know, it generated enormous amount of interest not just from homeowners, residential people, but a lot of businesses. They could sort of see we're having clear bins or something like that and might actually be good for their business in terms of educating their staff. Commercial operators, same sort of deal. Schools wanted them. They wanted the bins at events. One of the good events we actually had, it went to a beer festival. So we had our bins at a beer festival. And people at that festival actually sorted their waste beautifully. And we figure that if you can get a whole heap of half cup people going in and putting their waste in the right bin, you know, it works really well. Um, because again, people just look and they see, they're just following the behaviour. Created lots of general media, as you, as you saw, and the social media side of things have been absolutely huge. You know, both local, state, interstate and international. You know, just the interest in, in that whole clear bin thing was, was, was phenomenal. And it created lots of conversations. Whether they were good or bad, people were suddenly talking about waste, which we were quite excited about. And then also on our website, we have these bin ambassador registrations and we just got 500 plus sort of of people wanting these bins, you know, to come, come out to them. There's sort of queuing up for them, which is, again, Fantastic, but it creates us a bit of a, a logistical sort of problem. So then we have, so we had the campaign, you know, it was, was really terrific. 
But then it was like this, this case where, I mean, people have only got an attention span of about five seconds. So, you know, how do you keep one of these campaigns going? You know, where do you go to, to next? So, you know, we, we had a bit of a think about it. And what we did is we actually then got a, a, a local comedian to sort of throw a bit of humour into it. I mean, the, the clear bin and the big pile of rubbish is a bit, bit sort of depressing. But so we thought a bit of humour, you know, a bit of shopping, you know, and again, we gave this, this part of the campaign big exposure. So when you look at going into shopping centres on billboards, on trains, in cinema, all of these sorts of things, it had big exposure. And from the, 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 the figures of all of these, everybody in Perth should have seen the Face Your Waste campaign at least once. You know, the, the coverage was, was, was so large. And just as an example of, of, of one of the um, video things we did with, with Famous Sharon, Okay, and she was wonderful. So we actually got her to do a number of, uh, of, of video clips actually dealing with some issues at all levels of the waste hierarchy. So depending on even where you were at, you could actually have a little bit of a look at a video um, thing, which was, so it was on the website, but also was attached to, to our fa Facebook side of things. And again, you know, we thought the, the clear bins went viral. I mean, the, the, the famous Sharon things just even went further. Like it was just, it's been a, been a phenomenal um, side of things, um, you know, with yeah, with just just like I said, with the exposure that she's got. So the general response to the facial waste campaign, like I said, it's only been going for twelve months. So we started with zero, and now we've just got um, you know a, a huge huge following. Um, you know, it's going up kind of thing by by ten percent, sort of every every month in terms of of um, you know our our website sort of followings and the Facebook followings and and all the just all the the, the posts and retweets and and God knows Wallace goes out there that in in uh, with the whole social media side of things it's just 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 enormous. Um, Kelly, Kelly, sorry. <laughs> Earlier on she said she was over in Perth a couple of couple of weeks ago and as soon as she landed, bang up comes a face your waste sort of uh, um, message on on the Facebook feed. You know, so again it sort of is getting out there. Um, you know, to, to, to all and all and sundry. So it's you know it's a quite an exciting um, you know stage of the, the the campaign. The other thing is too, you know, like with all all sort of things, you don't go into these things to get awards. But we've managed to sort of pick up some couple of waste waste innovation award over there locally in Perth. Um, we've had had some uh, awards for for the marketing side of things in terms of a campaign, and also um, we 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 sort of got. A couple of awards for the for the radio ads we did, and for the posters and the the general outdoor campaign that we we had, and they've been at both state, Australia, and Australasia level. So you know it's created a fair bit of industry, a fair bit of impression from that side. And just before we actually got on the, the plane to come over here today, I found out that um, you know that we've actually been put forward to be nominated as Australia's best campaign entry at the Cannes Festival. So. Um, I'm looking forward to maybe getting that and getting a trip over to, to, to France. Be, be be quite good. So has it made a difference? Well, indications is that it has. Everywhere that we've went, where we've had waste awareness discussions have gone on, they've been sort of huge. Wherever the bins have gone, they've they've been put into place, and sorting has occurred occurred really well. Where the bins have gone, reduction has taken taken place. There's been a lot of self analysis sort of going on where people have been looking at it in a changing behaviour. One of the next big stages of the campaign now, because we're sort of doing it in a number of steps, 
is again the stage two then is really now to start measuring you know any changes in behaviour you know that that's sort of going on and finding out you know if there is actually a measurable impact from this campaign like we're getting a following now we're going to see if we can actually do something with it to get some real real sort of um, things from it so um, you know just a positive campaign and just wanted to share it with you today thank you Thank you.